So it's not nothing. And that's significant. <laughs> that's the point <laughs> I want to present from Euclid. Let's explore more on this theme of the point, the monad. There's even further lessons. Now that we have the definition, let's explore what the ancients understood the meaning of the point to be. Now some important tips on using the geometer's tool. We have to consider what it is we're doing and using. These three tools, the compass, the straight edge, and the pencil, they're ancient. And they're very important tools. They're found in various forms in most of the cultures. And of course, these were used by artists, architects, craftspeople. They're both practical and symbolic. Whether we use a metal compass or a string tied to a stick on the earth, these tools represent divine attributes. So the theme is, treat them with respect. Whenever we draw a geometric figure with these tools, do nothing unconscious. Don't just simply do, but be aware of each action that you perform with these tools. No act in geometric construction is trivial, and none of them are without profound symbolism and correspondence to the world's creating process. So the idea of the compass. The compass is one of the most astonishing tools that we can use to understand geometry. The medieval geometers, they contemplated the compass as an abstract symbol for the eye of God. In their worldview, the legs of the compass represented rays of light and grace shining from heaven to earth from deep within us outward toward the periphery of our ordinary awareness. The compass has only one role. From a central seed point, here's some of the fascinating symbols. From a central seed point, the transcendent hole called the circle it opens up a divine space of light, awareness, and potential configuration. Remember the one thing about every circle we draw. We construct monads. It represents the monad, the complete universe. When turning a circle, hold the compass at the top, not its leg. That avoids changing the size of the circle. You complete all circles to see the full pattern of forces. The rotation, the whirling around the central point. That is the beauty and power of the compass. One of the profound symbolisms of the compass, the instrument that helps us create a symbolic universe every time we use it, we begin with the point, of course, boink, and that represents the circle's essence. Holding a compass closed is the mythological world axis. This is the world mountain. It represents the holy center of many ancient cultures, the symbolic pole or spine that supports creation and around which everything turns in adoration. Traditionally, the center is the most honorable place, known to the Greeks as the Keep of Zeus. Protectors of hearths and boundaries, centers and circumferences. It's the source of the moral order. Zeus dispensed judgment from the center. And here's the kicker. Nothing exists without a center around which it revolves. Whether the nucleus of an atom, the heart of our body, the hearth of the home, the capital of a nation, the sun in the solar system, or a black hole at the core of a galaxy. When the center does not hold, the entire affair collapses. An ideal or conversation is considered pointless, not because it leads nowhere, but because it has no center holding it together. The point is the source of our whole of holes. 
It is beyond understanding. It's unknowable, silently self-enfolded. But like a seed, a point will expand to fulfill itself as a circle. Ponder the point as a seed enfolding a sacred mystery. Hold that sense of wonder through the full construction of a circle. Through meditation and self-contemplation, we can seek a more subtle center, our higher or deeper self, the power that motivates the actions, emotions, thoughts, and desires. This center of gravity is not in space, but in pure awareness. The place in you now aware of these very words. Where do you hear these words? You may believe or doubt that there is such a center, but you cannot doubt the power with which you doubt. This power is the motivating power with which we are conscious. This is identical to the heart of every natural form and symbolized by the center of the circle. It is the seed of our mysterious ability to be aware. And it's only during psychological stillness, with no mental, emotional, or desire ripples disturbing the quiet pond of our awareness within us, that we consciously approach our own deep sacred center. So when you mark a point on paper, contemplate it as representing the center of profound awareness about to expand, construct, and motivate the universe. Then look inward, silence the voices, and seek that center's correspondence within you. The point has been made with the compass. The center has been established. The compass stands upright on it. Now we open the compass. Now, this seemingly trivial act is an important stage in the geometric metaphor of the cosmic creating process. It represents the first archetypal principle of the monad, equal expansion in all directions. This is why God is depicted as a geometer. In many myths, the universal creating process begins with an expansion from a divine center, like the very first biblical command, let there be light. In Hindu mythology, the dimensionless Brahma speaks aloud the word Aham, I am, a word made of the first, the middle, and final letters of the Sanskrit alphabet. Now, this represents the circle's three parts, the center, the radius, and the circumference and our own spiritual center, psychological reaches, and outer material form. The opening compass represents the first manifestation of God's light and Brahma's voice, illuminating and vibrating the universe into existence as expanding states of self-awareness. This is what we call nature. Nature's forms represent invisible forces made visible. The force of the circle's equal expansion works through different materials. Tap the side of a round cup of liquid and watch as perfect concentric rings appear and converge to the center, and then pass it and expand outward again. Nature delights in the principle of equal expansion in concentric ripples and splashes, craters, bubbles, flowers, and exploding stars. As you open your compass, consider that you are metaphorically repeating this first principle of the monad, the opening of light space, time, and power in all directions. The second principle of the monad is expressed by the circle's rotary motion. Unlike the still center, the circumference speaks of movement. We replicate this universal principle in our geometric constructions whenever we turn the compass around its point and scribe a circle. Symbolized in nearly every culture as a wheel, the circle represents nature's universal cycles, circulations, circuits, orbits, periodicities, rhythms, vibrations, because cycles are a principle of the monad. They are all pervasive in the universe. We are thoroughly enmeshed in cycles and periodic rhythms, but notice only the most obvious, like our breath and hunger, or the time of the season. All of this is what the compass explains, symbolizes, and teaches us. All circles, all cycles, have rising and declining phases. When one side goes up, the other side goes down. 
This is true on any scale, in turning wheels and in the rising and falling pulse of an emotional outburst, the changing amount of daylight through the seasons, the rise and decline of great cultures, and the life cycles of stars. It's